and um, wanted to I want to show the Greek gods as being in the Bible, in the um, lineage of Cain, um, who went to the east into the land of uh, the Indus Valley, where they established the first city, and it's all mentioned in the Bible. Um, it says Cain married his wife and she gave, uh, had Enoch and Enoch was born Irod and Irod was the father of Mahuyael and Mahuyael was the father of Methusael Methusael was the father of Lamech and Lamech had two sons um, named uh, Yab Yabal, Yabal and Yubal Yabal was the father of those who um, live, in, live in tents and raise livestock and his brother's name was y Yubal he was the father of those who play the string instruments and pipes which is um, that would be Hermes and Apollo. Um, I can pull up an image of of that, and it's it's very well known um, what their roles were. Here you can see, um, yeah, Hermes as the god associated with um, animal husbandry and farming, and uh, Apollo with the flute and the lyre. Here's a picture right here of them actually standing together with their different roles so yeah here you can see the the liar with um, Apollo and then here's um, Hermes came across her uh, cattle which belonged to Apollo so that's Apollo the um, the one the one um, keeping livestock and the story goes that Hermes is actually the one that introduced the lot gave the liar to Apollo so Apollo then became associated with the flute and the lyre, but it was originally Hermes that invented the flute and the lyre. So they're, they're twin brothers um, as sons of Zeus. So that would make Lamech would be Zeus, um, and then uh, Methusael would then be Kronos. Kronos is the father of, of Zeus. So this is how you get the entire breakdown of the Pantheon through these references to... Um, here, his brother's name was Jubal, and he was the father of those who play stringed instruments. And so you have the brother who keeps livestock, which is um, the Apollo, and then you have the other brother who taught the um, flute and the lyre, which was actually Hermes. So if if the story goes correctly, that's where they, that's where they get their origin from in the Bible right here. And this this is the original founding story of this lineage of the lineage of the Greek gods. And this is all in the, before the flood. Um, this is all before Seth was even born. So after Lamech um, and his son Tubal Khan is of course Vulcan who forged all kinds of tools out of bronze and iron, which is right here. So that would be um, uh, Vulcan, the third son of Zeus, Vulcan was actually a, also a son of Zeus by a different woman. So you actually have Zeus marrying multiple women, um, having sons, and, and both in the Bible and in in, uh, in the uh, in the actual Greek legends. And some of the Greek stories were, I think, were possibly added to later. Certain things, certain things might be mixed up, but the the the, um, the lineage is clearly there. So it, it would it would it would give us the breakdown of the source of the later pantheon that developed under the Sumerians and the Greeks who who um, carried these same stories on into their culture. And then, they, and then slight adaptations would have changed over time. Same thing with all the pantheons, the Vedic pantheon as well. You have all the same roles of different gods um, who play the flute and the lyre and, and things like that and, and, and do farming. <clears throat> um, and so it's um, it became clear to me that Hermes is the father of the, the Hermetic order, the founder of Hermeticism the founder of the Hermetic order going back to of course before Seth and so I came to I associated the um, Hermes with a Horamaza or Hormaz um, who um was also called Zedek. So I, I started to realize that um, Melchizedek and Hermes are the same person. 
So this, this, this goes back to the ancient Hermetic order. The biblical story goes back to the Hermetic order, which is older than Seth, which is a lineage that has carried on for multiple thousands of years and generations, um, carrying this knowledge, the knowledge of the all, the knowledge of El or the all among the, the Hermetic sect. Um, Hermeticism talks about, um, which, which is based in the teachings of Hermes, um, that there was a being called, of course they call him Her Hermes Trismegistus or Thoth is another term, or that's what would be Tao Day in the Taoist tradition. Tao Day is the ancient, um, immortal who taught man the knowledge of the Tao. So again, you have a reference right there to um, uh, Dao De Tianzun, the, the, the immortal who teaches men knowledge of the Tao, and Hermes or Thoth who teaches men the knowledge of immortality. So how to be how to how to become more immortal um, through the through the, the understanding of, of the all. God as the all, a philosophical concept called by many names such as God, Lord, Father, the mind, the creator, the all, however peculiar. God is self-creating, transcendent, imminent. So the concept of the all is very similar to the concept of El in the Bible, or Elohim, the source and origination of all the mind that is behind all creation, the mind that is behind all of the moving things, all the moving parts, which is what you see in Genesis. So the breakdown of the created order is being listed and described. Um, to me, it would seem through even the these ancient philosophical principles where Abraham first met Melchizedek in Salem you know, before the Bible was written, where the, where it's taught that even some Jewish sages actually believe that Abraham got some of his mystical knowledge from 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 Hermes, from from Thoth, from Hermes of Egypt, of ancient Egypt, and ancient Phoenicia and Salem, which those areas were all connected at that time in 2150. Around that time period is when Hermeticism actually spread um, throughout Egypt. So it's there's so many layers of similarity correlation between the Bible and this ancient philosophy and ancient understanding. Um, and I just started to put it together as I was looking at the names and the, and the, and the understanding of the all um, in the biblical perspective. And so, um, Hermes or Thoth is a record keeper of the, was record keeper of the gods. Lao Tzu was actually record keeper for the kings in China. So you have the sun, you have, we have instant reference to the sons of Cain going east, um, establishing the first cities, the Khan. Um, Khan, Khan goes eastward, meaning to grasp, to, to take. To, to gain, to control. Gain, or Khan, or um, Cain, we're t translated as Cain here, is actually Khan. Um, so Khan would mean king, kingly, to, to basically to, to take power. So Khan is establishing the first empire to the east, which is toward the, toward the Silk Road, toward the Himalayas, toward China. If you go east from Eden, you end up in, uh, in, uh, in the Himalayas. In that region, uh, which is where Lao Tzu happened to also live later in time. So Lao Tzu is a symbol of um, the Khan. Khan traveling to the to the east. Lao Tzu travels to the west to find the mortal man, to find the old man, to find the the, the original um, pure, you know, pure man, 
that wasn't tainted by um, by knowledge, tainted by by uh, cultural knowledge, um, which uh, in 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 the the Bible carries the same exact um, concept within it. If you look at the Bible, it's about the pure Adam, the first man, the, the pure self. The, they were they were pure. They were innocent. They were naked. They didn't have any um, clothing. They didn't have any uh, cultural things controlling them and manipulating their mind. The serpent hadn't come in yet to manipulate their mind. So you can clearly we clearly see a um, the metaphor for this advanced knowledge not being there yet, and the the understanding of this advanced knowledge by the Khan, by the Greek gods, by by this culture of of, of demigods. Um, before it, this knowledge got there, and you can see this playing out between the god, between the conflict between the gods, um, and you also see this. We see this playing out with Lao Tzu and uh, Con Confucius. Uh, Lao Tzu and Confucius having a debate about the nature of man and the um, the idea of uh, instilling culture into primitive man. Or, or just letting the letting nature take its course, kind of letting just letting 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 natural things flourish without interfering with them, and that that the the principle uh, playing itself out in in the modern world, which is exactly what we see happening in the Bible. In the Bible, this first. Um, you know, encroaching on that natural order was the snake. And then you find the sons of God doing the same thing, which would be the Greek, to me, in my opinion, the Khan, the Greek gods, then reinstituted the same knowledge back into Eden once again, um, which led to the downfall of the gods. So you have Prometheus going back. It says that the, the, the first rebellion in Genesis 4 happens. Um, the later the Greek gods would come into existence and um, and then the rebellion happens in Genesis chapter 6 where the sons of God those who have been elevated those who have give, been given this advanced knowledge actually fall and decline so they're actually losing that grasp of that power to be like God and they're falling into sin and prim, you know primitive state um, marrying the women natural women and having children by them and those become the Nephilim or these, these you know, the demonic, you know, people who have, who have a spiritual power, but yet they also are corrupted by the flesh. So they're, they're, they're become, they have, they have a, a mixed uh, breed happening here where, where they're, they're abusing the power of the gods, the power of, of Elohim and um, causing all kinds of harm and damage to the world. And that would be what's happening in the Titanomachy. The, the war with the clash of the gods and the clash of the Norse gods where um, Odin leaves Asgard goes to the west Kronos is, dri Kronos is actually driven out by Zeus to the west where uh, Thor uh, Zeus then takes over so the same thing you see happening with Thor between Thor and Odin so you have the same principle here happening again um, where um, in one legend, Kronos actually leaves and goes to the west. So you have so you have them going to the east, and then Kronos leaving, going to the west. Um, Lao Tzu does the same thing. Lao Tzu is going to go to the west um, on, a, on, a, on a riding on a, riding on a buffalo. So here's the the image of Lao Tzu going to the west, where he 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 first confronts Confucius. Um, Opposes the idea of interfering with the natural order and with natural man, and then he then he leaves, and heading to the west to um, you know instill this understanding of the Tao, the natural and pure understanding of the Tao, without interfering with with um, people's man's mind, but to let them be free, um, in akin to Elohim, the spirit of God guiding man versus the spirit of, of, of law and the serpent guiding man under legalism which is so so we have this a clear you know difference of, of um, consciousness you know 
playing out the natural spirit and the consciousness of legalism and control and manipulation where people are forced into um, false you know state of civilization um, prematurely and so that's what that's what's happening both in the record of the Greek gods and the war between the gods um, Hermes um, coming to the West um, just as Sadek came to the, 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 the Phoenician god Sedek um, came, came to Salem um, just, as with, just as with Hermes and um, Sedek or Zedek same thing as Melech Sedek Melchizedek Melchizedek came from the deity appearing in the theogony of Roman era Phoenician writer Philo of Iblos um, so he's called Sedek Sadek, a Phoenician god who lived in, in the area of Salem. This is clearly the same, be the same person as Hermes, um, father, son of Amunos and Majos, which would be Amun, um, Balhamun, Bal which is Zeus, and uh, Majos, which is Maya, and Mishor, um, his brother Mashor. Mishor may be reference to um, Apollo. Wanderers, Titans, um, and, and uh, Hamun, Hamunos, and Majos were born from the Titans, which is the same as Zeus. Zeus, Zeus was born from a Titan father, Kronos, and then he had the two sons, Apollo and Hermes. So, Sedek described as the father of the Dioscori, the Kabaroi, or the Carabantes. The Phoenician Sedek was equated with the Roman Jupiter, which is, this is wrong. This is actually um, slightly off by one layer but that would be Lemek the father of Sadek so Sadek would be in this case Hermes and his father would be Jupiter so there is an association there for sure and it's it has been conjectured that it's related to the name Zedek righteousness here here right here even um, in the pre-Israelite Jerusalem as the names of two kings of the city, Melchizedek and Adon Adonai Zedek, containing the element Zedek. According to one such hypothesis, Zedek was an epithet of the god El. However, the mainstream understanding of these names means my king is righteous, my, my lord is righteousness. And I'll show the Zadok meaning righteousness. Um, a lineage of priests in Jerusalem are even named after this king, Sadek, who is this ancient pre Israelite king from Salem who is associated with Hermes and with the Titans. So this is it's, it gets really interesting. The layers of the synchronicity is is really interesting. And what this all points to, ancient Taoism, ancient Hermeticism, and the understanding of, of, of eternity, the understanding of God, the eternal. And um, Hermes is, would also be a Hora Mazda. So very clearly... Or or Maz or Hormes Hermes or or Maz or Hormaz. Um, here, Lord of Wisdom. Um, he is his title. One of his titles is Zedek, meaning righteous one, or one worthy of worship, or one one. Um, one who is uh, you know pure, righteous, holy, set apart, just like the word Zedek in Hebrew. Same exact same exact meaning. Um, He's called the Most High Zedek. He's he's the the highest Sadek, the highest the highest righteous one, the highest pure one. So that would be Melchizedek, Melek Zedek. So the ancient original Horomazda order comes from Zervanism, which is of um, Saturn, the Greek god Saturn, the Roman god Saturn. Um, Sor, Sor, one or Sorvan. Um, 
more like a TZ, which is where the Saturn comes from, Sat or in, um, uh, and Saturn is Kronos, Kronos is Saturn, and Saturn is, so therefore Saturn is Methusael in the Bible, um, the father of Lamech, and then, so you have Saturn, you have Lamech, Zeus, and you have Hermes, this lineage um, occurring. So this would be the origin of, as we can see, the, the, the Bible is the origin of all of the Greek gods, all the Greek religions and mythology, all of the Persian gods, um, uh, Hora Mazda, um, all of those deities and beliefs come from, stem from the Bible, stem from the, the patriarchs of the Bible and the original uh, Khan lineage in, in, in the East. Everything is, it's, it's just a, a cycle. It's all, it's all interconnected. Um, to the origin which is in the Bible, which is Elohim of the Bible, and the natural order, the, the, the natural man, the Adam, the pure man, where everything came from that place um, is what the Bible is really telling us and what Taoism really seems to point to as well. As we can see here, um, the Yazadas collectively are the good powers under Horamaza, who is the greatest of the Yazadas. Um, here is El Lao Lao Yun, the ancient high one, in, in who led Lao Tzu to go to the west. So, and then here's Lao Tzu riding on the bull going to the west. Zervon was certainly influenced by Hellenic philosophy. The relationship between it and Greek divinity of time, Kronos, has not been conclusively established. However, that would be, Zorvan would be Kronos. The, the origin of Zoroastrianism is called Zorvanism, or Saturnism, um, or Kronosism, or Odin, is, that would be Odin, the, or, the origin of, of Odin, who later would take that, those beliefs would end up in Ger Germany and the Germanic peoples, and um, in the Greeks and later cultures would have those same exact beliefs um, in their culture. And so, the ultimate um, philosophy behind this would be understanding and knowing the all, knowing, knowing eternity, knowing the reference to the eternal. And then the figurists um, believe that the sage, the Shangren, was in fact the Messiah. Um, these figurists, um, Jesuit people, they went to China and they 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 studied the Chinese classics and believe that Zoroaster and Hermes and Enoch was actually the Fuxi in of the I Ching. So Fuxi would actually be Hermes and Zoroaster. That's that's not Enoch. That would actually be Upolo of the Bible. So he's in the Bible. He's just from the lineage of Khan who went to the east. Enoch never went to the east. Enoch remained in Eden or near near Eden. So the Khan went to the east and became these the known as these demigods in the Hermetic orders and how they tried to um, philosophically understand God, you know, uh, after leaving the natural order, they created a system of, of, of explaining nature um, through philosophy. So the ancient, the most ancient philosophies, and here you can even see in the Chinese philosophy, Fuxi, with the hermetic, you can see the hermetic um, symbol of the hermetic staff here, and the unique male and female together. So the Shangren of the Tao Te Ching would be the Messiah, would be the belief that, that the Shangren mentioned in the Tao Te Ching is the Messiah, the bearing of the scroll, where um, you have uh, El, Lao Lao Yan carrying the scroll, um, Lao Lao Yun in Taoist tradition is the, high, the, the most ancient one who, who's, who's associated with the Tao. 
with the unification of the Tao and, and beings and having a being. Lao Lao Yud would be the most ancient one that's associated with that, with that eternal principle. Um, the, uh, the ancient high one. Um, we, when we find Daniel in, in the book of, in Daniel chapter um, 10, he, he's shown the scroll of truth from and by a old by a man who is being le led by El Elyon, the Most High, the Most Ancient One, who Daniel sees, and he sees a um, a, nor a normal mortal man in front of him in the vision in Daniel chapter ten. First, he sees in it this this figure that he can't explain, having a glowing face, like looking something like this, with a shimmering gold, uh, you know. Ra um, robe on and, and a, a white beard and, and this glorious glowing appearance and then he sees a normal man he, he clearly describes the two as being slightly different and the man says do not fear so again the, 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 the reference to the scroll would be Lao Tzu carrying the Tao Te Ching across the Silk Road in 550 BC to Daniel being led by Lao Lao Yan the, the ancient high one um, these all these really cross-reference one another. The timing is exactly the same as when Daniel received the scroll of truth in, in, Revel in Daniel chapter 10. I'll, I'll, I'll just... Daniel's vision of a man. It's even, it's mysterious. It, it describes two men, one being shining, wearing gold and silk, um, Daniel says he was speechless, wanted to look at a man, touched his lips and opened his mouth and began to speak. He said, the Lord standing before me, I am overcome with anguish. How can I talk with you, my Lord? Again, the one who looked like a man touched me and gave me strength. So there's two figures here, two figures. One is bringing him and showing him the scroll. He said, do you know why I have come to you? Soon I must return to fight, to, to contend with the Prince of Persia. And when I go, the Prince of Greece will come. But first I must tell you what is written in the book of truth right here. So in Daniel chapter 10, 21, the book of truth is mentioned. The scroll of truth is mentioned. So this, this old man comes to him, telling him, the, showing him the scroll of truth, saying this is what must be revealed to mankind. This is revealed as the mystery. Daniel then seals up this scroll in Daniel chapter 12. He's told to seal it up because no one, could, no one was able to understand Go your way, Daniel, because the words are sealed up until the time of the end. So here's Daniel, da Daniel, um, 12, 12, verse 9. Go your way, Daniel, because the words are sealed up. So the scroll of truth is sealed up by the old man who comes to him, the shimmering man with a shimmering golden silk robe on, comes to him with an old man who meets him on the silk road, showing him the scroll of truth. And he's told that it's going to be sealed up. And so we find that the book of Revelation is all about, the book of Revelations is about the, set, the sealed scroll. Revelation, Revelation 5. The entire, the, the entire Bible is about the unraveling of this knowledge to mankind. The unraveling of the mystery. The unraveling of those who are ready to understand. I said, I saw, then I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll with writing on both sides and sealed on, with seven seals. So the scroll of truth that was shown to Daniel was sealed, was concealed, was contained. Its meaning, its message wasn't meant to be revealed um, until the right time, until, until man could truly understand the principles at play, at work here in it. And Jesus is the one who was worthy to open the scroll. No one in heaven or earth, under the earth could open the scroll or to look inside. I wept and wept because no one was found worthy to open the scroll and to look inside. This would be the principle of the Tao, the, pr the purest principle in the whole universe of the Tao would fulfill that, 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 that nothing, can, um, nothing can surpass it as the philosophical principle. It is the most infinite wellspring of all creation it would be the Tao, which is the finality of the whole entire book. The seventh, the opening of the seals, the scroll is finally opened in um, in Revelation chapter ten. You read 
go and take go and take the little scroll that lies open in the hands of the angel who is standing at the sea and on the land. So after the seven seals are open, the angel then um, is able to show him the scroll. He says, give him the little scroll. He says to me, take it and eat it. It will turn your stomach sour, but in your mouth it will be as sweet as honey. And then he was told, you must prophesy again about many peoples, nations, languages, and kings. So finally, the scroll is 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 revealed um, in Revelation chapter ten. And then he's told to go and measure the temple, um, exclude the outer court. So this is referring to the infinite, I believe, the unlocking of the infinite principle of the Tao, which is the infinite source of all heaven and earth. So everything it says in its in heaven rolled together like a scroll. So the only the, the coming from that tiny little point of the Tao is where the entire universe actually came from, from an infinitely small point. We, that's the entire principle of the Tao. The principle of the Big Bang um, seems to be the exact same. The evidence of the Big Bang points to the Tao, points to this tiny point, the seed, this mustard seed, uh, like Jesus talked about, the unraveling of the mystery of heaven. Um, really coming to pass the seventh trumpet the trump the trumpets are finalized and then in and then the dragon rises at that point to try to defeat the seed of the woman um from off the face of the earth it says he tried to kill the lamb but he the, he the the lamb overcame him by the death and now the, he tries to devour the seed of the seed he wants to he wants to keep his control over the earth of course so he's trying to devour the tiny principle that's being unleashed and not being and being revealed and that's where the devil is really act, it, it, uh, lashing out in revelation chapter 12 and 13 to bring the earth to a standstill to try to take and clutch and to, and to destroy the knowledge of the unlocking of the scroll the Tao, the principle the pure principle that governs the whole universe coming from this tiny gentle flowing stream um you know as is mentioned in revelations chapter 22 as jesus talks about the trickling pure river of life the stream this source which is pure and un undefiled it's a crystal in in revelation 22 the angel showed me the crisp pure river of the waters of crystal clearest crystal as the waters of life flowing from the throne of god and of the lamb down the middle of the great street of the city so the throne of god is just just this the pure principle, the pure flow is just coming out eternally, um, as in the as like with the Tao, as well. Um, Tao is described much in the same way. The Tao um, is a um, principle. Tao um, is the natural order of just in a general understanding of the Tao, you can see here the symbol of Taoism. Tao is the natural order of the universe whose characters one human intuition must discern in order to realize the potential for individualism. Intuitive knowing of life cannot be grasped as a concept so through actual living experience of one's everyday being. It's the way, the path, the route, the road, the doctrine, the principle. The underlying natural order of the universe whose ultimate essence is difficult to circumscribe due to it being non-conceptual yet evident in one's being alive. The Tao is eternally nameless and to be distinguished from the countless named things which are considered to be its manifestations. So you have a source point and all the manifestations. So all the things that are, are describable are, are um, described with words and ideas. The Tao is the one thing that ultimately cannot be described other than as it, even interesting in revelations it says a crystal a crystal clear wellspring something that has no clear it's it's crystal clear it's it's just this infinite clear um having no no uh graspable uh you know uh material definite explanation it's crystal clear a flowing river or a flowing stream which just eternally just pushing out um, birthing universe after universe and creation after creation as the mystery of heaven the mystery of heaven is completed um, in Revelation chapter 10 so it's it's uh, 
the understanding of the mystery would would be where did the whole I can't think of any greater mystery than, than the, the how the universe is functioning and how it's stretched out and, and how and why um, there's no no greater mystery there you know than that revelation 10 and so Jesus is the one that is um, unified with that becoming the lamb that was slain on the throne so the principle is he his blood his dna is the conscious layer um expanding out to all creation to forgive that's how he's, jesus is able to forgive and to um correct error you know to correct the error of the fall we need jesus christ um, jesus takes the scroll and takes it from the hands of El Elyon, the Most High, and then he gives it, he, he's, in, he's in distributing this knowledge to man. He's distributing this power to man, but through the Holy Spirit, through the pure spirit. Jesus is saying, you, well, you, know, you can't do it like the Nephilim did it. You can't do it like the fallen angels did it. You know, you're not going to destroy the world once again. But no, I'm going to distribute it through the Holy Spirit, and people are going to act holy and use this power for the good, use this power for the redemption of nature, not for the fall of nature. That's the difference this time around. Jesus is saying, no, not this time. I'm not going to, the earth isn't going to get destroyed like he did in Genesis um, chapter 6 and 7. It's going to be renewed, and it's going to be renewed through the pure, crystal clear waters of, 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 of the Tao, you know, of, of the living word and the living river of life. Flowing from the scroll, from the midst of the scroll, and, and Jesus says, I have the power of, of, of the scroll and of the redemption of mankind, um, and, and I'm going to do it my way. Through, through God the Father and through and through the, um, the purity of the Holy Spirit. So we see a total restoration of nature happening in, in, in uh, Revelations chapter 22, of course.